you and Jason wanted to kind of do the panel thing. Sure. I'd love the reason I paired the two of you with also Yokanon have been the, the idea of like trust in humanoid robots and other forms of agency. And I'm really intrigued by the combination of, you know, f the right to be an exception on the one hand with the phenomenon that you're documenting and trying to think about, um, yeah, trying to think about the relationship between those. Before you get into that, so second question, it's Angelica's question from earlier online, basically, you know, thinking about how time pressure may play a role in how we trust AI and also how we reason about their capacities, perhaps of the kinds of emergency, very emergency kinds of situations you're studying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think time pressure has a big impact. Um, you know, as, as I maybe hinted or said, um, in our experiments, time pressure seems to probably prevent the person from thinking about the system's reputation, which is a big factor with regard to trust, right? You know, is the system, should I put this amount of risk in the system? People in our experiments don't seem to think that way. They just tend to react, as most people do during emergencies. Um, they just react. Um, and regardless of the, the clues. Um, now, in, in a lot of other applications, it might be interesting to think about, you know, just time pressure, for example, for a, a loan officer. Does that play the same role? I mean, it wouldn't bring up the same sort of cognition I would think of in an emergency, but, you know, it still is time pressure. Yeah. So I think on, on the point of whether or not what we're actually trusting in the kind of studies that um, these experiments, um, I wonder how much, if we could give a more sympathetic reading to the uh, human beings who we're describing now as having miscalibrated trust as an over-trusting. I mean, so you put yourself in the situation, you think that you know, this is a high stake situation. Uh, let's assume that they, they really do believe that there's a fire. Mm -hmm. And there's an expert system in place here to design to try to keep me safe. Um, you know, is it that unreasonable to think that um, it might not know better than me um, with regard to the fastest way to the exit? And I would think that you know it's not just about the trust in the robot in this particular object, but it's a trust. We were talking about like social technical systems, right? Um, and it might be a trust in you know, the institution that puts this kind of system in place. And if there really is a system like this, surely the fire marshals have vetted it, and surely it's gone through all sorts of um, review. Is it, if you have all those background beliefs, is it really miscalibrated to be so to trust a robot uh, in this uh, way? Well, there's a couple things about that. First of all is that, um, they don't seem to think about the reputation of the system. When we ask them why they follow it, they don't ever mention things about um, it was built by Google. We've had examples where it said it was built by Google or it was built by, or it's like Trashbot. Like, um, and it, 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 you know, these indicators of the system's underlying trust have no effect in their behavior. And the other thing is that you know, so when we sit here, we tend to think about this as the person sort of cognating on the system's trustworthiness and then acting. But they're following it continuously. There is a situation where there's an exit right there, and they're seeing people go right through that door. And the robot's saying, I'm going to take you to that door way over there. Yeah. And you, you see both doors, and we can see the subjects look at both doors. And they look at that one, and they think, I'm still going to follow. I mean, I, I could show that video if you want. Um, so it's not, again, it's not this reputational situation. They're not thinking that way. They're thinking, this is something that I'm going to follow. I have. To I think follow. that's totally right. They're, they're not deliberating about it, right? They're not adducing reasons for no. it against and thinking about, you know, well, it's a social, there's a system in place here, and surely it was vetted. I don't think any of that happens. But I think probably, you know, people just go into in an emergency default mode, defer to authorities, defer to experts, which is actually probably not a terrible heuristic that when we're in an emergency, we ought to defer to the experts. And we shouldn't reason our way through ourselves. Yeah, it's not the, the time to be the critical thinker. The, the <laughs> challenge there is that that expert, just in the moments prior, showed you their lack of expertise. 
Yeah. They made mistakes right there. And they're making a mistake, you know, that you can see an active shooter and they're dragging you right towards him. Yeah. Like they're they're making a mistake in real time right now and you're still following them. Yeah. At least 85% of people. And that seems both qualitatively and quantitatively different from what, you know, what we would want people to do. Um, so we do have a follow-up question from Angelica online. Um, it's, uh, hello. Um, <laughs> uh, regarding this, um, mis perhaps misplacement of trust in into these machines, I wonder about, you know, this new paradigm of um, being able to trust the AI systems, which are usually deep neural networks, and they don't usually have any explainability behind the decisions that they're making. In some way, you would almost think that these neural, big neural networks are kind of like our emotional reasoning in that they just are intuition. You know, there are correlations, large correlations, and maybe there is data behind it, but they're correlations. And I, I think, what, what do you think about um, maybe the changing tide in how people view AI systems? Perhaps we are starting to realize how fallible they can be, how they hallucinate, and maybe we would start to make this distinction as AI becomes less reliable, that we will trust them less. Um, whereas maybe in the last decade, we were looking more at kind of decision trees and things that we could trust. It's kind of odd because you know, sometimes, like Mickey was talking about algorithmic aversion, which seems to be like systematically miscalibrated trust and so far under trust the deliverance of the algorithm and when you're talking about robots you're thinking about systematic over trusting of um of the systems and i wonder is the difference here just embodied versus not embodied or is there just yeah more fine-grained things that are that are going on yeah, yeah i mean it's a good question i don't know um or, or is it situation specific um or is it experience specific you know maybe we just have more experience with certain types of automation than we we do with others. Um, um, I, I do want to bring up, uh, um, I, so just quickly to, to address your question, I, I do think as we become more experienced and we see these systems fail more often, we will we'll go from over trust to under trust probably pretty quickly. Um, but one thing I, I did want to bring up is that you also mentioned explanations. And so we, we ran some studies where we saw if the robot made different sorts of explanations, you know, would people be more likely to follow it? And uh, one of the sort of strange and surprising things about that is that as long as the robot made an explanation, uh, a, a reasonable sounding one, um, people were like more likely to follow it. Um, even if it was just follow me because I'm going there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you, you know, I mean, this again could be the fact that it's an emergency situation and you're probably not going to process the deep nuances of a lengthy explanation. But it sort of cut across a little bit of the literature, which sort of says that if an AI system can explain itself, you know, then, then it'll be more trustworthy. In our case, the, the system didn't really explain itself much better and was found to be as trustworthy. Thanks. I, I mean, just a small comment, but it reminds me, you're finding, reminds me a little bit of the studies on anchoring and adjustment. And this is a kind of classic, actually, Daniel Kahneman just passed away last week, and he was one of the, mm -hmm. the creators of these, uh, these heuristics and biases, discovering them. Um, and the anchoring one is like you ask someone a question, like how many seeds are there in a watermelon? 500? And what that number you give them anchors them. And then they, they, they were like, oh, it's probably more than 500 or less than 500, but, they, but that influences them dramatically. Mm. And I think the idea here is like, I have no idea how many seeds there are in a watermelon. It could be a thousand, it could be a hundred, I don't know. So that number, they're experts or they're asking me the question, maybe it's not irrational to trust that number and then base it on, on that number. Um, and it strikes me as something kind of similar. I have zero knowledge, I've never been in this room before, I don't know how to get out. It could be fallible, could not be fallible, but for lack of any better information, I'll just follow yeah. this thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. It definitely is the, the novelty of the robotic docent. Sometimes <laughs> people are super familiar with. So these are fascinating ideas. Um, I'm wondering if there's value in, like, so, so you guys are talking about like AI systems being kind of used to mitigate harm from like an emotional perspective for Jason and, and 
from a like a physical nox noxious stimulation like bodily harm um i wonder if there's like value in creating ai systems that seem fallible for the emotional context where engaging in this experience of of empathy seems to to the recipient uh, the the target not as this like indefatigable process that 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 it involves some stake on on part of the robot the ai system but then like when um in in the opposite context when when the harm is like bodily we need to create ai systems that are incredibly uh infallible mm -hmm. since people trust them so much yeah. um and also i think there's like something in there that maybe there might be a difference in the type of trust people have for for ai to resolve these more emotional uh problems than than uh in more like physical issues like like the ones you were describing earlier yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, there there are certainly different types of risks as well. Financial risks, you know, or a loan, or a, um, you know, an AI stock picker or stockbroker. Um, I would imagine for those other types of risks, you may see people more more likely to cognate on the system's reputation and how and, and consider that, or or any kind of cues that that would sort of hint to its trustworthiness. So you know, we don't see people trying to build empathic AI systems that have are biased just like humans are and experience compassion collapse just like humans do um, and whose judgments are warped by um, empathy in the way that uh, humans are as well um, those systems have already been built yeah they're used in uh, studies from the University of Tulane Tulane University showed that with the criminal AI criminal sentencing systems they were really good on these 50,000 cases. They were really good for giving light uh, sentences, but discriminated against blacks. Yeah, Why? Because the data did that and was trained on that data. So what are they going to do with that system? <laughs> right, yeah. So I, maybe you're thinking about the Compass algorithm. Um, it's a proprietary algorithm um, that asks people questions like, um, you know, who are your um, three closest friends and have they been incarcerated? And um, those are amongst the kinds of questions that I ask you. And then, like, certainly, um, that's what's going to be system used for uh, bail decisions. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Your three closest friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you actually look at the specific questions that I asked, they're really surprising. There, there are a number of them. Like, it's a battery of 200 questions. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of them. Um, you can answer honestly. Can you just say Donald Trump? Donald Trump. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but so those are algorithmic decision making systems. They're not necessarily empathic AI systems, right? Um, but I mean, we might find the same kinds of biases coming up in empathic LM based AI systems as well. I haven't actually seen all that much of um, that specific kind of problem when it comes to using LLMs to express empathy, um, but that's something to look out for.